Hey there and welcome back to Ants on a Vlog. I know I haven't posted in a while, but I wanted to make this video showing off all my colonies to you guys and giving some useful tips on finding and raising queen ants. Hope you enjoy! So the first colony I have to show to you guys today is Trachymermix septentrionalis. These are the northern fungus farming ant. I've never kept a fungus farming ant before. As you can see, there's fungus in that little ball right there, and the ants will actually feed that fungus things like this little rose petal right here. You can see the little bits they cut out of it, and then they'll deposit it on the fungus, and then the fungus will eat the rose, and then it will produce these little buds for the ants to eat. So it's a really, really, really cool, mutually beneficial relationship that these ants have co-evolved with this fungus for, and I really hope these ants work out. There's a total of six queens in this colony. I caught them, or I, a friend caught them on August 6th at like 5 p.m. He said it was a big nuptial flight. Um, I'm very excited to have them. Now besides just feeding their fungus rose petals, these ants also do another a variety of flowers, like that yellow petal that you saw in there. However, they didn't accept this one and they much preferred the rose. They also do oats, um, and I've heard online that they do lettuce as well. Uh, and you do not want this uh, fungus to contact water at all because it can potentially destroy it. And also, you don't want to feed these ants, unlike most honey, because of the antifungal properties which it has, which can inhibit their growth. But I really hope these ants work out. Uh, they're going to grow their fungus a little bit more, and then they'll have their eggs ready and be on their way, hopefully. The next ant colony I have to show you guys is my Campanatus americanus colony. She has three workers, and I caught her at around the end of May this year. You can find these queens at generally high elevation, and the way I got this one was just by flipping a rock, and I found her and her eggs under it. They're really cool, um, and they're really beautiful and known for their colors. You can see she's like hazel, and her workers are orange as well. And she's just, there. these are one of my favorite carpenter ant species, and I really hope they do well. You can see she has tons of eggs. Now, carpenter ants lay a lot of eggs, and then they usually end up eating some, in my experience. You can see here... I'm feeding them a little honey. I fed these ants so much so that they hopefully don't eat these second batch of eggs, and hopefully she just has t like 10 workers in the second batch instead of only three. But don't panic if you do only get three workers for your carpenter ants. That's common to have sometimes only two, anywhere from two to seven, or even more sometimes you can get in your first batch of workers. Um, and they vary a lot, but here you can see the workers taking the honey back to the nest, back to the queen, and then here I actually filmed them doing trophallaxis, which is where ants take their second stomach, their social stomach, and then they regurgitate the food to share with each other. And these carpenter ants get really swollen with honey and then share it with each other. Super cool. Next up is my Formica pallidifolva group colony. I don't know the exact species, but I got these ants under a rock. They were actually from an already established colony that had many, many queens. Um, and I haven't seen any polygynous, which means multi-queen formica before this. So I took three of the queens, and as you can see, this colony actually started from zero workers. They are my fastest growing colony, at a, currently around 15 workers with around 15 larvae and pupa. Um, they are stored in a test tube with a Carhulance test tube insert, um, which is basically just this little 3D printed thing with some sand in it. Um, you can see just how active the colony is. They all fit into the little tiny bit of the insert that's covered. So even though there's 15 ants in there, they really compact it in there. But these ants are really fun because they're very active. Um, and I haven't, I really enjoy Formica because they grow uh, a bit quicker than Campanatus, even though they're, because they're a bit smaller. Generally a good rule of thumb for ants is the bigger they are, the longer it takes for their eggs to mature. Um, but these ants just grow really quick. They eat everything I give them and they attack it with voracity and it's really fun to have them. The ant colony you see here is my Colobopsis impressa colony, also known as corkhead ants. Now these ants are named that way because of their very flat heads on the queens and some of the major ants that they use as living guards against other ant colonies up in the trees to protect their nest. They're very cool. I caught each of these queens from black lighting, which is basically taking a UV light at night, which attracts insects, um, and they both ended up having pupa separately, and then I decided to combine them when the first worker came, and as you can see, they're getting along good. They have many other pupa that are about to harden, that's why you see some are white and then other ones are really dark. Those are their exoskeletons hardening as they are being born. Um, these ants, if you are keeping these ants, 
always, always, always give this queen a drop of honey. They are technically fully claustral, which means they don't need any food. But in my experience, if you do not give these ants honey, they will not found. So they might as well be semi-claustral at this point. These ants are very cool. I've kept them in the past, but I've never gotten this successful before. You might have noticed that one of these queens actually has a wing on it. Uh, not a lot of people actually know that most queen ants and most species have wings. So that's how they mate. They go on these nuptial flights after generally rainstorms and then they fly, they mate with another ant, and then they land on the ground, break off their wings, and go to found their colony, and that's when it, us ant keepers can find them. This queen chose to leave one of her wings on, her worker will probably take it off later, or the other queen. It's not something to worry about. Ants, if they do have their wings, can still sometimes found colonies. Speaking of ants with wings, all of these Fadoli Tysoni queens do have wings. Now I call all these at a black light as well, but unlike the Colobopsis, which were at night, these ants were caught at 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning. Why I was up at that hour doing black lighting, I don't know. I guess I'm just really dedicated to the hobby. But as you can see, these queens got a ton of eggs. Now, Fadoli are a really cool genus because what they have is the ability to have special eggs that turn into soldier ants or major casts. And these ants are specialized in hunting, guarding, or sometimes... Uh, getting seeds and crushing them with their big jaws. Now the Fadoli soldiers look really cool because they have like these little bobbleheads that are disproportionately large to the rest of their body. However, I have caught many of these queens before and none of them have ever made it past just laying eggs. The second to last ant I have to show you guys is my beautiful Formica subsericea queen. These ants are big and silver and they look really cool. Um, and they're also extremely fast. Now if you go look way back on one of my first videos, I had one of these queens and unfortunately she just never got anywhere because she was infertile. This queen I actually caught with her wings on. I thought there was no chance she was fertile because she flew towards a window that she was attracted right next to me in daylight. And I opened the window, scooped her up, put her in a little cup, brought her home, and now she has a larva and is on her way to founding a colony. These ants are really cool, they're monogamous, so they only have one queen, unlike a lot of the other ones you've seen on this list, um, but their colonies do get extremely large despite this. If you see here in the corner of the test tube are actually her wings that she tore off. These ants are daytime flyers, so if you want to catch them, you got to do it in the middle of the day. I saved one of my favorite ants for last, and that is Campanatus castaneus or the chestnut carpenter ant. These ants are one of the most sought after ants in the United States due to their nice bright orange color. This queen has about six to seven pupa, which is a lot for a carpenter ant. So I'm really hopeful that she's gonna do really well. I've actually had Campanatus castaneus before, but the queen only had three workers and then she stopped laying eggs. And I still have her, but she hasn't really rebounded. So this queen is actually going to pass her despite my other queen being a year old. That really goes to show how some queens are just really good at being mothers and others just aren't. You can see here there's actually a larva spinning a cocoon with silk, which is really cool footage that I got because it's just not thick enough yet so that you can see through it. So this larva is a little worm that's on its way to becoming a pupa, which is like a mummy looking ant, and then that will harden and then become a worker ant. This queen I also caught under a rock. Like Campanatus americanus, Campanatus castaneus, also live underground, which is deceiving because their name is Carpenter Ant, which would make you think they live in the wood, but they don't. One thing you can notice about this queen, which is why she has so many eggs and is going to have seven workers, is that she is constantly not moving. Carpenter Ants will often take naps. Worker ants actually nap for a few minutes at a time, while Queen Ants can sometimes nap for hours a day. If you're an ant this big, you need to conserve a lot of energy to put that all into getting more workers and growing your colony. If you want to catch a queen ant, it's still not too late. You can still get some this summer. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I know I've been posting in a while, but I plan to hopefully post again in college. If you could drop a like and subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. I put a lot of work into my videos, and thanks!